Good morning, everyone. This is uh, welcome to uh, Saturday Morning Scripture, where I just read a chapter from what I've read this week, and then I comment on it. I discuss it. So if you're out there and you're watching me, uh, feel free to join me. Um, I'm going to try to do it about 8.30. Today's about 9 o'clock. Just, this is just my second week, so bear with me. And uh, let's get in um, to the Word, and before that, we'll go ahead and... Uh, uh, pray. Welcome, Rick Morris. Good to see you, old friend Johnny. Good morning. Um, let's pray before we begin. Father, we give you all the praise. We thank you for a brand new morning. We thank you, Lord, for the uh, possibilities and uh, what you're going to do in the future. We love you, Lord. And we come here this morning to read your word and to discuss it. Lord, we just thank you so much for your word and how rich and how uh, beautiful it is um, to, uh, to, to, to know truth, to know you, and to know that you have everything in control from, you, you've had all things in control all from the beginning and you will to the end. And Lord, uh, thank you for leading us to know you that we might enjoy eternal life through your son, Jesus Christ, in the blood he shed on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you do and uh, help us now as we read your word and uh, talk about it. In Christ's name, amen. So Genesis 32 is where we're at, and this is the story of Jacob bringing his family back to the promised land. So I want to give a little bit of backstory to Genesis 32. Um, if you recall, uh, Isaac, the second patriarch, we have uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Jacob is the third patriarch. And we, <clears throat> we, we uh, saw uh, Jacob deceiving, Jacob and his mother, Rebecca, deceiving uh, Isaac into giving him the blessing. And of course, that was what was prophesied even before Jacob and Esau was born. So it's, it's an unusual story, and I didn't want to talk about that. But when he, after deceiving his father, uh, Isaac, uh, I, Esau wanted to kill him. And so he threatened to kill him after Isaac died. And so Jacob left um, under very um, hard, hard circumstances that, you know, it just wasn't, it wasn't good at all. And then... Um, Jacob and uh, Esau had already married uh, Canaanite women. They were Hethites, and um, that didn't go over well, real well with Isaac and Rebekah. So Rebekah sent um, uh, Jacob away for, for two reasons, to get out of Dodge, of course, to get away because of what happened with the blessing. And the second reason was to find a wife. So he went back to their, their hand, and that's, that's where... Um, uh, Abraham's servant, Eleazar, went to get his wife for uh, Isaac. Um, that, so he sent a servant up there, Eleazar, to, to marry Rebekah. So then um, he's going to go up there and find uh, uh, Laban's daughters, Rachel and Leah, of course. And then, then, then that's where they have the, the 12 or the 11 kids at the time. At this time of reading, they have 11 kids. Benjamin is not yet born. So he's coming south. And so, uh, and then the deal with him leaving Laban was not good either because Laban, Laban was a conniver. He had changed um, Jacob's salary like 10 times as wages. And um, there was just some deceit going on there as well. And uh, so in Ch Genesis chapter 31, we read about um, Laban catching up to Jacob because he took the whole family up and left them. And uh, it was because God told him to leave. And it was kind of funny because he, he talked about going back to the home anyway, and God told him to leave, and all the circumstances came into place. I mean, it's a, it's a huge decision to make. And everything came into place and left, but um, it, wasn't, um, it wasn't good with Laban how they did it. So you have to read Genesis 31 to understand that. And there was a lot of drama, a whole lot of drama going on in, in Genesis 32 that um, led to what we're going to read about today. Um, and so um, this is just after Laban goes back to Padan Aram and um, 
uh, Jacob's continuing south to go back to his home uh, promised land. And then, um, and then in this chapter, we're going to read about how he reunites with Esau and how that goes. So um, we're going to read about that. So I don't want to give it all away. So Genesis 32. Jacob went on his way, and God's angels met him. When he saw them, Jacob said, this is God's camp. So he called that place Mahanaim. Jacob sent messengers ahead of him to his brother Esau in the land of Seir, the territory of Edom. He commanded them, you are to say to my lord Esau, this is what your servant Jacob says. I have been staying with Laban and have been delayed until now. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, and male and female slaves. I have sent this message to inform my Lord in order to seek your favor. When the messengers returned to Jacob, they said, We went to your brother Esau. He is coming to meet you. And he has 400 men with him. Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. He divided the people with him into two camps, along with the flocks, herds, and camels. He thought if Esau comes to one camp and attacks it, the remaining one can escape. Then Jacob said, God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, go back to your land and to your family, and I will cause you to prosper. I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant. Indeed, I crossed over the Jordan with my staff, and now I have become two camps. Please rescue me from my brother Esau, for I am afraid of him. Otherwise, he may come and attack me, the mothers and their children. You have said, I will cause you to prosper, and I will make your offspring like the sand of the sea too numerous to be counted. He spent the night there and took part of what he had brought with him as a gift for his brother Esau. 200 female goats, 20 male goats, 200 ewes, 20 rams, 30 milk camels with their young, 40 cows, 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys, and 10 male donkeys. He entrusted them to his slaves as separate herds and said to them, go on ahead of me and leave some distance between the herds. And he told the first one, when my brother Esau meets you and asks, who do, who do you belong to? Where are you going? And whose animals are these ahead of you? Then tell him, they belong to your servant, Jacob. They are a gift sent to my Lord Esau, and look, he is behind us. It, he to also told the second, second one, the third, and everyone who was walking behind the animals, say the same thing to Esau when you find him. You are also to say, look, your servant Jacob is right behind us. For he thought, I want to appease Esau with a gift that is going ahead of me, after that, I can face him, and perhaps he will forgive me. So the gift was sent on ahead of him while he remained in the camp that night. During the night, Jacob got up and took, two, took his two wives, his two slave women, and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of Jebok. They, he took them and sent them across the stream along with all his possessions. Verse 24, Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not defeat him, he struck Jacob's hip socket as they wrestled and dislocated his hip. Then he said to Jacob, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. Jacob, he replied, your name will no longer be Jacob, he said. It will be Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. 
Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he answered, Why do you ask my name? And he blessed him there. Jacob then named the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, he said, yet my life has been spared. The sun shone on him as he passed by Peniel, limping because of his hip. That is why still today the Israelites don't eat the thigh muscle that is at the hip socket, because he struck Jacob's hip socket at the thigh muscle. Amen. Welcome, uh, Jason and Ed. Thank you for joining me this morning, Genesis 32. This is uh, Saturday morning scripture. So I just read Genesis 32. Uh, there's some drama going on here because, uh, like, as I said, it was just on the heels of leaving uh, Laban, and now he knows that uh, Esau is coming on his way. And Esau is bringing, um, you know, 400 men with him. That was what it says in um, uh, ver verse 7. So what I love about this story and what we're going to read in, in I'm going to read a little bit in Genesis 33. We're going to learn about how um, when you're faced with great difficulty or uh, uh, unusual circumstances, it leads us to be terrified because we don't know what the future brings. So we learn about uh, maybe maybe there's talk at work about um, you know layoffs. Maybe there's talk about um, uh, you know losing losing your job. Maybe, maybe uh, there's talk about um, some, you know, any, any kind of bad news that, you know, you, you don't know what's going to happen in the future causes you to be terrified. And here, uh, Jacob, who last time he saw his brother, his brother wanted to kill him. And he's coming now with 400 men. So what's he supposed to think? He doesn't have anyone except for his family. Um, there's, so there's absolutely no one to defend him. So he's scared for his life, and he's scared for his, his family. And now he's, he's preparing to make peace with Esau. And he has no idea what's in Esau's heart right now. Because the last time he, he knew Esau, it was, it was just bad news. Um, so let me read in uh, uh, chapter 3 just a little bit, and then we'll discuss the rest of uh, Genesis 32. Now Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming toward him with 400 men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two slave women. He put the slaves and their children first, Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph last. He himself went on ahead and bowed to the ground seven times until he approached his brother. But Esau ran to meet him, hugged him, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Then they wept. When Esau looked up, he saw the women and children. He asked, Who are these with you? He answered, The children God has graciously given your servant. Then the slaves and their children approached him and bowed down. Leah and her children also approached and bowed down. And then Joseph and Rachel approached and bowed down. So Esau said, What do you mean by this whole procession I met? To find favor with you, my lord, he answered. I have enough, my brother, Esau replied. Keep what you have. But Jacob said, No, please, if I have found favor with you, take this gift for, from me. For indeed, I have seen your face, and it is like seeing God's face since you have accepted me. So, wow, what a relief, right? Esau wasn't intending to kill him. He wasn't even intending harm. Um, God changed Esau's heart somewhere uh, in, 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 in the 20 years since they had passed, this is a beautiful reunion between the two brothers. Um, Esau was the one that, you know, remember, gave his birthright away at home. They, they couldn't find any two different brothers in Esau and Jacob. Jacob was the homebody that, that loved his mother, and he was a, he was a mother's boy. And, um, and he just, he, he kind of loved the quiet life. He was the one that had uh, no uh, hair on his body, so to speak, compared to Esau. Esau's the guy that was the, uh, the, the wild countryman, the, the guy that went out, out outdoors and hunted. And he uh, got along with his dad, remember, the, 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 the two. And so, um, you know, they, they absolutely hated each other. And then 20 years later, um, you know, Jacob's afraid and, and uh, he, has, he has no idea what, 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 what's in store for him. And so uh, uh, Esau comes, and he, he intends no harm at all. So um, I just love this re little reunion. 
And I love what uh, Jacob, uh, Joseph had to say. I'm sorry, Jacob. Jacob said, for indeed, I have seen your face, and it is like seeing God's face since you have accepted me. And the little um, something related to that is when we smile at someone, it can be like God um, when we smile at someone. We can be as God because when when someone receives the the return of a smile from someone's face, it, it changes everything, and it. It, it it basically it's it's a way to love someone else it's like the, one of the simplest things we can do to love another person is to give them a smile because when you give someone a smile it it, it brings a smile back and it, it it gives us joy it gives us peace knowing that it's a it's a it's a friendly face and so um that's what i love about this little passage here in, in genesis uh 33 but I want to go back to um, uh, what we read about. Jacob was ter terrified. Jacob prayed this prayer in verse 10. I'll start in verse 9. Jacob said, God of my father Abraham, the God and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, go back to your land and to your family, and I will cause you to prosper. He goes on, verse 10. I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant. Indeed, I crossed over the Jordan with my staff, and now I have become two camps. So let's think about this. Jacob leaves home after he has the, uh, the argument, or not the argument, but he deceives his, his, uh, his father in cahoots with his mother to steal the blessing, which was prophesied, by the way, but he left with nothing. And now he's coming back with with uh, two wives um, and their servant wife, uh, servant uh, servants, Bilhah and Zilpah, and then his eleven kids and his all his flocks and herds. And so he's coming back a wealthy man after having been gone away for two decades. And so um, he 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 comes to the end of himself here a little bit, where he realizes. He's humbled, and God said, "I'm going to be with you um, on the way." Remember at Bethel, he sees it was called Jacob's ladder. He sees the ladder way from from heaven to earth, and he he uh, he meets God at Bethel. For God is in this place, and so uh, you know God promises him you know uh, prosperity there, and now he's coming back to um, his his home. Um, you know, the, the, the promised land. And uh, so he says, I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant. So it's a great way to humble yourself before God because none of us are worthy, not one. We're, we're, there's no one that's good. Remember, Jesus says that there's no one that's good. And so um, no one is, you know, we're, we're flesh. We're mere flesh and we're flawed creatures. And so it's never a bad prayer to say, I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant. I don't care what your circumstances are today. God's given you something, and, he, and he's, he's blessed us, especially when we know him. He's blessed us with the knowledge of God himself and with salvation. So um, please rescue me from my brother, he says in, in verse 11. So this is a good lesson for anyone that's worried about something that maybe something stirred in the past. And they're worried about a confrontation with a relative or with an old friend. And, um, you know, we, you we have no idea what's going to happen in uh, Good Morning, John, in, in, in whatever circumstance. And so uh, God can uh, change hearts. He can change your heart. He can change the other person's heart. There's so many ways God can work through that situation. And we see in, in, in Genesis 33 that God changed Esau's heart to prepare to, you know, to meet, um, <clears throat> to meet uh, Jacob. So, um, and then let's talk about the wrestling match and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. So Jacob wrestles with God is the, uh, is the heading in my Bible uh, right there at uh, verse 24. And um, he wrestles with this man. <sighs> Jacob says, I will not let you go unless you bless me, in verse 26. And in verse 28, your name 
the the man he's wrestling with, your name will no longer be Jacob. He said it will be uh, Israel. So this is a real key event in Jacob's life. This changes. He he made this makes him a new man going forward. So it's interesting how God does this in the midst of kind of a tumultuous time, and it seems like you know it's 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 a it's it's a certain night. It's one night that um, this happens, and he's alone. It's interesting how God set these circumstances up so that he would separate himself from everyone else, and it and he's alone, and he he and this man comes along, and it it's just strange. It's kind of a bizarre story. So who is this man? Jacob says then J in in verse thirty. Jacob then named the place. Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, he said, yet my life has been spared. I believe this man that he wrestled with was Jesus, pre-incarnate. It's Jesus before him. And we know Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus was there in the beginning, was the word. Um, John 1 is a good reference, but all throughout the New Testament, we learn about Jesus not being just an ordinary man, of course. He came from God, and we see him all throughout the Old Testament. So let's get this right. We know um, in the future of this, of, of this meeting, um, God appears to Moses, and we know very well that no one can see God face to face and live. God makes it absolutely clear that um, people cannot uh, survive uh, God, a face-to-face -face meeting with God. And so even, even Moses wasn't allowed to see him face-to-face, -face, although he spent many days in his presence. Um, and we see this happening in certain events with the angel of the Lord, where people see um, the angel of the Lord and they worship, they give an offering, and yet they're spared. Their lives are spared. So that tells you that um, this is a divine being. If you're worshiping and giving an offering, it's a divine being. You don't worship angels. So all throughout these Old Testament passages, there's one with uh, Samson. There's, uh, there's an encounter with uh, uh, Joshua. Um, there's Aram's encounter with this man in uh, earlier earlier in a chapter where he bows before him. And so uh, this is an appearance of Jesus before he comes, you know, to earth as a baby. And so he's seen God face to face, but yet my life is spared. That is a, is a common thing that's said with these uh, men, the angel of the Lord, these encounters I'm talking about throughout the Old Testament. So I believe it's, I believe it's Jesus. So it changes him because um, from here on out, we have Israel. This is the first occurrence of Israel in all of Scripture. So this is where Israel gets his name. He used to be called Jacob. Now he's Israel. And, um, and his sons, uh, of course, are representative of the 12 tribes, from Reuben down to Benjamin in, in the birth order. Uh, the, and they were uh, birthed to uh, Jacob's uh, two wives and, and, and their servant wives. The servants, well, the servants, concubines, wise, however you want to call them. It's kind of, kind of interesting. We're going to see that kind of stuff today. But anyway, that's all I have. Um, it's an amazing uh, chapter, and, a, and it's a turning point in Jacob's life. And so just know that um, regardless of what circumstance you're facing today, whatever fear, whatever doubts you have about whatever situation, remember Jesus is in, in Matthew 6, don't worry about tomorrow. Uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything and uh, ask God what you need, and he will give you the peace that transcends all understanding. So it's Philippians 4, 6, and 7. We're taught all throughout Scripture, don't be afraid. Don't worry. So I don't care what you're facing today. Give it over to God. Say, God, you know, I, I, don't, know how, I don't know how to do this. Humble yourself before him and say, Lord, please um, help me uh, call on him. And uh, make yourself right with God if you're not already. And uh, God will give you the peace. He'll see you through. And I'm telling you, seek the Lord your God uh, with all your strength, all your might, all your soul, and all your mind. And he will lead you. He will uh, give away what you need. And he'll um, take you in a way that you never knew he could lead you. And uh, I'm telling you, 
uh, I found that to be the case in my life. And uh, as Jacob found here in his life in Genesis 32, and there's nothing new under the sun. It's the same God that wrote these scriptures, that put these scriptures together for us, for our enjoyment and to know him um, that leads us today. God hasn't changed. God doesn't change. So that's all I had to share this morning. Uh, good morning, Evangelist Yasir. I appreciate you chiming in. And I'm just about to wrap up. So you can watch this video uh, at your leisure when I'm, when I'm finished. And I'm just going to close in prayer. This has been a Saturday morning scripture, Genesis 32, where I read the scripture and then I talk about it. So I want to get a, a regular time frame so that maybe people can join me live and they can interact with me. And it's fine if they don't because you can just watch the video. But nevertheless, um, Father in heaven, your name be praised. We thank you so much for all that you do for us. We thank you for your word and how we treasure it, Lord. Your word is amazing, and it, it gives us food for our soul. It feeds our soul, Lord, and we just thank you for that. And we thank you for all that you're going to do with these seeds today. And, Lord, bless us as we go about our day and help us to meditate on your word as we've read it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, everyone, for sharing your time with me today. And Joy, good morning. I'm out of here. Bye.